Welcome back to our Terraria tutorials. And in this episode, I'm actually going to talk a little bit about some of my favorite accessory combinations and where you can find the materials that you need to craft them. Now, uh, most of the materials I have on hand, some of them I don't quite have some of the materials yet. But uh, we're going to talk about where to find them all and what sorts of accessories that you can make with them. Now, uh, this is a specific note for Gavin here, but I know some of these accessories, you uh, you probably already know where to find them. So, you know, you just feel free to skip around the video to whichever section you'd be most interested in. Uh, first, I want to start off... Oh, I forgot to grab one thing from my uh, miscellaneous crafting materials chest here, which is a whoopee cushion. First, I'm going to start with one of my absolute favorite accessories, the bunch of balloons. So, you can already see I've got a uh, lucky blizzard in the balloon equipped in my accessory slot here. And I already have a cloud in the balloon as well. And I have a couple other balloons to make some of the other ones here. So, we're going to start by going to the sandstorm in a balloon. And it's the same recipe for the, the blizzard in a balloon, the cloud in a balloon, and uh, the sandstorm in a balloon. Which is, you basically have to have a shiny red balloon and whatever jumping accessory and a bottle that you'd like and you combine those to make the balloon. Now this doesn't yet open up oh it does open up the bundle of balloons okay I spent forever trying to find a uh, a cloud in a balloon because I wanted to make this uh, fart in a jar you make from the whoopee cushion and cloud in a balloon and, you know, since I already have it, I'll go ahead and make a, a fart in a balloon, too. I thought I needed that one to make the bunch of balloons, but apparently you do not. Which really simplifies the matter. And I'm going to combine the sandstorm in a balloon, the blizzard in a balloon, and the cloud in a balloon into the bundle of balloons, which allows you to quadruple jump and increases your jumping height. And I got really lucky because warding is actually the uh, modifier that I wanted for that because in hard mode your defense, or in expert and in hard mode too, uh, your defense is super super important and that lets me get the best modifier I could get from it so showing that off you can jump really really high with it so high that I almost took enough fall damage to kill me there <laughs> but yeah uh, an honorable mention goes to the horseshoe balloon. So I'll go ahead and use the fart in a balloon that I just made and combine it with the lucky horseshoe here to make a green horseshoe balloon, which allows you to negate fall damage completely. But I actually have a beam mount, so anytime I'm falling and I would take fall damage, I can just press R and get on my B. And no matter how far I go up, I can slow fall down and not take any fall damage. So I don't need one of the horseshoe balloons. I'd rather quadruple jump instead of negating the fall damage. But they're both super useful accessories. So I'm going to uh, put this guy to the side here. And at the end of the video, I'm going to go ahead and talk about uh, the various places. Well, let me go ahead and... Uh, and I'll talk about them as, as I go through the accessories. So I'm going to drop down here in the middle of my NPCs. So while I'm scrolling around the map, I'm safe. So the sandstorm in a balloon I actually found uh, from, where is it? This pyramid right here. And, you know, uh, not every world's going to have a pyramid. Pyramids are the only place you're going to find the sandstorm in a, uh, the sandstorm in a bottle. And, you know, an easy way to find one is just to basically keep on creating worlds and running around until you find the deserts and you want to look for the bits with the sandstone blocks sometimes they're quite well hidden this one I actually had to dig out a whole dune to get into to get the sandstorm in a bottle the cloud in a bottle and the blizzard in a bottle are both found in more or less the same areas uh, just in different biomes for both of them you want the you know, underground and uh, cavern layers. So this whole section of the map right here, pretty much right down to the lava, you'll be able to find a cloud in a balloon or a blizzard in a balloon in. 
And the shiny red balloons, uh, most folks probably already know, you can only find in the Sky Islands. A uh, really good way to find the Sky Islands is once you can defeat the Queen Bee on a regular basis, if you can acquire the honey goggles, you can actually fly your bee mount. And you can see on the right hand side of the screen here the uh, how far up I've gone. You can fly the bee mount pretty much all the way up into space, into the top of the world from almost any point on the map unless you're like really low down and you know you can fly it all the way up and then just drift over a little bit to the right and just slowly let yourself drop down to be able to search for sky islands in your own world really quickly and efficiently and uh, you'll most likely have to make more than one world to get three shiny red balloons but with the bee mount, it's just super, super easy to go and get to the Sky Islands to find everything that you need for that. Uh, it's also where you find the lucky horseshoes to make your uh, to make things like this green horseshoe balloon. And if you make it with a blizzard in the bottle, it's a, a blue horseshoe balloon. Uh, I want to say it's like a yellow horseshoe in a balloon if you make it with a sandstorm in a bottle. And, you know, depending on which type of... Uh, you know, blizzard in a blizzard in a bottle, cloud in a bottle, sandstorm in a bottle, or fart in a jar that you make it with, will also determine uh, the extra jump height that you get. I want to say that clouds have the lowest jump height, uh, then followed by blizzards and sandstorms, and farts actually might give you the most jump height out of all of them. So this green horseshoe balloon probably gives me uh, more jump height than the other ones, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that, so don't don't quote me on that. So next, we're going to look into uh, the lightning boots. Now, there's actually a couple different recipes you can use, and I don't have all the parts, so I'm going to go ahead and buy one of the ones that I'm missing from the Goblin Tinkerer here, which is the rocket boots for five gold. So you can find flurry boots and Hermes boots. Uh, pretty much in like the, the underground areas. So right before the caverns start, I want to say like down around this depth usually is where you'll find the Hermes boots. And I think it's the same thing for the, for the flurry boots, but you might actually have to be down in the cavern layer, down a little bit deeper in here to get them the flurry boots from the ice biome. Uh, either one of those will work, either the Hermes boots or the Flurry boots. And also, if you go all the way over to the oceans, and I believe you have to fish up an iron crate, you can also get the Sailfish boots. So any one of those three will work. Right now I don't have any Hermes boots or any Sailfish boots. So I'm going to go ahead and go in here and go to the Spectre boots. And you can see I've got my flurry boots over here and my guarding rocket boots over here and we're going to combine those into the specter boots now I'm not actually going to make these because uh, I like to keep one of each accessory so I want to keep my aglet and my hasty anklet of the wind here but you can take your specter boots uh, regardless of which material you make it out of as well as your anklet of the wind and your aglet to make the lightning boots which you can see I've got equipped over here so, uh, one thing that it doesn't list that makes these different from the Spectre Boots, because both say, uh, the Lightning Boots say the wearer can run incredibly fast and allows flight, and the Spectre Boots say the same thing. Uh, the bonus to the Lightning Boots that it doesn't list is you also get like an 8% movement speed increase. So, it's half the bonus, because the Aglet's 5, and the Hasty Anthem of the Wind is 10%. Uh, base with the extra 3% from the modifier there, which would be 15%. And the uh, the lightning boots actually give you 8, which is roughly half of that, a little bit over half. Uh, so like I said, I'm not going to make my, uh, my specter boots into lightning boots here. But I am actually going to make these lightning boots into the frost spark boots in a second here, which you get from taking lightning boots and combining them with ice skates. So the combination allows for flight, super fast running, and extra mobility on ice. Uh, and it shows the 7% increased movement speed there that the lightning boots have. 
So this will help you uh, to not fall through thin ice in the ice caverns. And you also won't slip around a whole lot when you're running around on ice blocks, red ice blocks, or uh, purple ice blocks, depending on whether you have a corruption or a crimson world. Uh, now, the aglets can be found basically anywhere on any surface or underground chest. So, like, if you find a chest out on top of the world here, you can find it. I believe you can find aglets inside the living wood trees. Uh, any sorts of areas, uh, like underneath here, where sometimes you'll find chests, you can find aglets, and you can find them down to about about this depth in the world. And uh, I know they appear in the jungle and the regular biome. I think they'll appear also in chests that you find in the crimson. I, I don't actually think that they'll show up in the ice biome. But basically just about everywhere else, either on the surface or just just in the little beginning parts of the underground, you can find aglets. The anklet of the wind is another story entirely. You have to find those in the jungle. Uh, and I found mine, I think, pretty deep underground. But you can also find them just in the regular underground instead of the cavern layer. But pretty much anywhere from, you know, here down to, you know, where the lava layer is in the jungle. And any chests in these areas, you can find the anklet of the wind. Uh, if you want to be able to go ahead and make the lightning boots there. Alright, now the reason why I'm not going to combine those ice gates just yet is because I want to show off... Uh, well, actually, we don't have all the materials for this because... I don't really want to go find another diving helmet right now. But I am going to go over to, uh, and I think I already have the Arctic gear, but I want to go ahead and go over to uh, our guide here. And we'll take a flipper to show it to him. And you can take a flipper with the diving helmet, and you can make the diving gear, which you know combines the, uh, the greatly extended underwater breathing. I think you can, you know, breathe underwater for I think about three or four times the regular amount of time and you can also just keep on hitting the space bar when you're in water an infinite number of times and you'll keep jumping upwards to simulate swimming now if you take the diving gear and you combine it with a jellyfish necklace you'll get the jellyfish diving gear which uh, does all three things it, it allows you to uh, get the provide light underwater like the uh, jellyfish necklace gives you, gives you the extended breathing, and allows you to infinitely jump upwards and swim in water. Then if you take those and you combine them with the ice skates, you combine the, the jellyfish diving gear along with the ice skates, you get the arctic diving gear, which I believe I already have, yep, I already have equipped over here, uh, guarding arctic diving gear. Uh, now it does not stop you from being chilled in cold water, but it gives you the extra mobility of the ice skates uh, as well as everything else. So you can fall down on top of thin ice and not have it break, which is really nice. And yeah, it turns the light from uh, like a pinkish light from the from the jellyfish necklace to a bluish light when you're underwater, which I think actually reduces the uh, level of light just just at like a tiny, tiny bit. But it's still really nice to have the uh, the Arctic diving gear there. All right. So the next uh, combination, oh, uh, before I do that, so diving helmets you find only in the ocean, and they're a really rare drop from sharks. So you have to go all the way over to your ocean, and you basically have to be able to survive in the water for long enough to fight, you know, possibly 30, 40, or more sharks, and able to get the diving helmet. And I believe you can get the jellyfish necklace from any jellyfish, it's just a really rare drop. But you might have to specifically fight the pink jellyfishes over here in the ocean. Uh, so a really easy way to do that, which I'll actually show off at the end of the video, is to take... Uh, do, 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 the meteorite armor along with the space gun. So the full bonus set of the meteor suit will make it so that the space gun costs no mana. 
Uh, the space gun can be auto-fired, which means if you just hold down the mouse button, you'll just keep shooting lasers out of it infinitely, uh, with no ammo cost, no mana cost, no nothing. And the great thing about the lasers that come out of the space gun is that they provide light, as well as travel through multiple enemies. So, if you can go to the ocean and run down into the ocean with your magic mirror in your hotbar, and if you can find an underwater chest, and this is easiest in small worlds, where it's both faster to get to the ocean, and for some reason I've just noticed that um, in small worlds there will be usually be a larger number of water chests in the oceans at the end of the world, and this might be because you know maybe there's only a few water chests in each world, and with a small world, uh, you've just got less water to work with, less space, and just more of the chests end up being concentrated in the oceans. But uh, if you can go to the ocean at the edge of the world and run down and use anything that provides you light while it's hacking, such as an ice blade that you can find in the ice biome, you can swing it and shoot out bolts of ice which will fly forward and light up the water to allow you to see where you're going and it'll knock back enemies like sharks and jellyfish without you actually having to hit them. Or again, the space gun with the meteor suit works really well for this. Uh, if you fire the lasers from the meteor, uh, from the uh, space gun at the ground ahead of you while you're going, like in a, in a 45 degree angle pointing downwards, it will show you the way uh, along the bottom of the ocean while you're running and allow you to see where the treasure chests are. So if you do that, it's pretty easy to find a flipper. Uh, flippers you'll find all the time in water chests and in fact, you know, you may already have one just from running around and exploring in the caverns and finding uh, random water chests while you're playing the, the regular game and exploring, you know, underground. So if you have a flipper and you have the meteor suit equipped, what you can do is actually just keep jumping upwards and you can jump up to the surface of the ocean. So, you know, just again, showing that, that uh, you just let yourself sink down from here and you fire lasers around in all directions and that'll both light up the water and knock away any sharks or jellyfish coming towards you. And then when you're about to run out of air, you keep on tapping the space bar till you jump up to the surface of the water. And again, I'll show this an example of this at the end of the video, how it works in practice. But essentially, you can survive forever in the water over here, using up no mana, no ammo, no nothing, just firing the space gun, the lasers down into the ocean to be able to kill the sharks and the jellyfish. And it might take you a while, it might take you 30 or 40 minutes, but if you do that for long enough, eventually you will get a diving helmet and a jellyfish necklace to combine into the Arctic diving gear. Alright, so moving right along to our next accessory here. Oh, Got to go over by the uh, Tinker's workstation. Uh, I wanted to show off the Sweetheart necklace, which I just think is a, is a kind of cool idea. I don't really use it all that often, but um, if you like stuff like the bee gun or the beekeeper sword or the bee's knees bow that uh, shoot out bees when they're damaged. You can also get the hive pack from the bee queen that makes your bees stronger and you can get a hornet staff which will summon a hornet which also becomes stronger when you have the hive pack from the bee queen. Uh, the bee gun can actually be a really powerful ranged weapon. Uh, the bees bounce off of walls and they'll home in on enemies and swarm in on them. And, you know, it may not seem like it does much damage, but once you've got about 15 bees attacking one guy, and they're stronger from the hive pack, it can really help out. Uh, especially before hard mode. If you want to make that strategy even stronger, you can take the honeycomb, which releases bees when damaged, and the panic necklace, which you can get from, uh, I believe, from destroying crimson hearts in crimson worlds, and you can combine those into the sweetheart necklace which will both make you move faster and release even more bees when damaged. So you can kill all your enemies just by using your bee minions for you, and that really helps out with that strategy a lot. So moving on to uh, what is arguably a much, much more useful accessory, uh, especially when you get down to the underworld, 
is the Obsidian Water Walking Boots. Now, the water walking boots you find in much the same way as the flipper. The easiest way to get them is to run to the oceans at the edge of the world, uh, to run down with any sort of weapon that provides light for you, and search for the underwater chests, and keep opening underwater chests until you find them. The only downside is that the water walking boots are really super incredibly rare. Uh, you might get lucky, and you might find them in the first underwater chest that you open, uh, you might have to go through what I did and have to make about 10 different worlds and check the oceans on each end of the 10 different worlds and open over 50 or 60 water chests until you find your first pair of water walking boots. And, you know, then a few hours later, uh, just find a random underwater chest in the ice caverns and you get another pair for free after spending, you know, about two, three hours searching for the first pair in the first place. But that's okay, because I want I want a pair of regular water walking boots, and I also want a pair of obsidian water walking boots, which you get by combining your obsidian skull with the water walking boots. So these will allow you to both walk on uh, water and they'll grant uh, and they'll grant immunity to fire blocks like meteorites and hellstone. And then if you want to make them even better, you can combine them with the lava charm. So these allow you to walk on water and lava, and they'll grant immunity to fire blocks like meteorite and hellstone, and they'll also provide you with seven seconds of immunity to lava. Yes, please. These are almost a must for exploring the underworld. Instead of falling directly into the lava and taking damage, you will land safely on the surface, you can fall from any height and take zero fall damage when you do so. Uh, you can press uh, the down button, the S, like the same as dropping through a platform, to drop into the lava if you choose to do so. But when you do so, you'll have seven seconds before it starts to damage you, giving you plenty of time to mine out hellstone in the underworld, or uh, build bridges and paths over the lava to make it easier to fight the uh, wall of flesh later on when you're ready for hard mode. So these are an absolute, in my opinion, must-have accessory, despite the enormous pain in the butt it requires to get a pair of water-walking boots in the first place. And these last two accessories uh, may not seem as immediately obvious but uh, why they're so good, but you can take the mana flower, which uh, I didn't show it off there, but you basically take a, a jungle rose and a mana potion, which the jungle rose you can find I think in pretty much any layer of the jungle just growing on the grass they're really super easy to find and the mana potion you get from combining two lesser mana potions and a glowing mushroom to make a mana flower so this will uh, reduce the amount of mana you use when using magic attacks and also when you get really low on mana and you can't cast another spell it'll automatically use a potion for you which can be really helpful in stuff like boss fights if you like to use magic weapons um, and the reason why I, I mention this even though I know Gavin you may not be super interested in magic weapons is because when you get to hard mode magic weapons are easily some of the best weapons in the game uh, and they'll it can help you out a lot if you've got a variety of different magic weapons that you learn how to use because you know ranged weapons are, are good in the sense that they can keep enemies away from you but magic weapons are really good in the sense that they can keep enemies away from you and they have a variety of special effects usually which you know can help you crowd control enemies and block them move them away uh, and, you know, steal back life sometimes, uh, just do all sorts of other crazy, crazy benefits. When I was playing in hard mode before, sometimes the only ways I could find to beat some of the bosses for the very first time were some of the magic weapons I got to use. And especially stuff like the water bolt can be really good uh, even before hard mode. So I just wanted to point out the mana flower, but uh, a superior option actually comes from taking this band of star power that you get from breaking the uh, the shadow orbs in corruption worlds and the band of regeneration which you can find in the uh, I think underground and cavern layers both in normal biomes forest biomes and you can combine those to get the mana regeneration band then you take a shackle 
you know, you can find from every old zombie out there, and you can combine the shackle with the mana regeneration band into the magic cuffs, which increase your maximum mana and also restore your mana when damaged. Now, one other thing that makes those really great, which I don't have, because you have to buy it from the traveling merchant, and he's never had it when he's uh, come around to see me so far, is you can take those with a celestial magnet and combine them into the celestial cuffs, which increases the pickup range for mana stars and restores your mana when damaged. So this will allow you to pick up mana stars from fallen enemies from 20 tiles away instead of from the usual two tiles away. So basically, anytime you kill something with a spell and it drops a mana star, you get 100 mana back pretty much automatically. And anytime a boss manages to hit you, you refill your mana too. This gives you a lot of magic power for long-term fights and makes it so that you're very, very likely to pretty much almost never run out of mana as long as you play your cards right with it. Uh, and I believe there's actually... Uh, mm, there's one other thing that you can use the Celestial Magnet for, which works really well. Sometimes it's better to keep them as magic cups, because you can combine it with a, a magic emblem to make the Celestial Emblem, and you get the same pickup range, and also increase magic damage with it. Like I said, I know you, you really like your Mini Shark, and that it's working out well for you so far, but I just wanted to point out those magic accessories, because, you know, when you do get to hard mode, if you happen to find that some of the magic weapons work really well for you, then it might be a good thing to keep in mind that these uh, mana cups exist. Or if you ever want to try out stuff like the water bolt in the dungeon, because it can be really good in the dungeon, might be something to keep in mind. Anyways, I uh, hope those were helpful. And yeah, uh, this video took way longer to do than I expected it to for one particular reason, which I'm going to show off real quick. Uh, to find that second cloud, that second cloud in a, in a bottle, to make the uh, the green horseshoe balloon, I thought it'd be really easy because you know you find clouds in a bottle all over the place, right? But basically, see all this area and all this area over here. I finally found my cloud in a balloon right over here. It was the last place I explored. I went. Uh, I was going through here to find the uh, the ice skates to make into the uh, the frostbark boots. I found that pretty quick. I didn't really have to explore too much of the ice area, but I went all the way down through here, all the way down over here, explored over here a little bit. Ran into the ice, came back, went all the way down through the lava, all the way back up here. And I went because I had a bunch of items, so I returned to my home world to return the items back. And I figured, you know what? Maybe I'll just come over to this side. And came all the way over here, and explored all the way down here, and all the way over here. And then I got killed by a boulder. And then when I respawned, I came back and I came all the way down here and all the way through here. And I finally found that last cloud in a bottle to make the green horseshoe balloon over here. So this video would have been done a lot earlier, but uh, the very last accessory that I wanted to get to be able to, to show off the, the horseshoe balloon, I didn't find for forever. So I hope you appreciate it. Uh, if you've got any feedback, feel free to let me know, and hope you have a great night. Bye-bye. Oh, I almost forgot. I'm going to have to edit this part on later and, and add it in. I was going to show an example of uh, jumping around in the water to uh, to get the diving helmet. So first, we have to actually get to the edge of the world. And again, I chose a small world for this. Uh, I think I, I think I already picked up all the water chests that were in this world, but I might be able to show you too just how many water chests you can find in the oceans and small worlds. Uh, if I if I actually had left them there, which I don't think I did, I think I picked them up once I had looted them out so I could take them back home.
There we go. Shield of Cthulhu wasn't working for a second. All right. So we're going to get to the edge of the world real quick, which shouldn't take too much longer here. I think I'm almost there. And this world, too, was one that I uh, explored to get to the Sky Islands. All right. So we're here at the edge of the world. And first, I'm going to take my... Uh, and you see I've got my diving gear equipped, so it's going to be forever till I run out of breath. And I'm going to see if I left the treasure chest here. Oh, leave me alone, jellyfish and shark. No, I think I picked them up. But I, I want to say that in this ocean, there were three. And in the other ocean, uh, on the other side of the world, I found uh, five treasure chests. But you just find a lot more often in... Uh, and this side doesn't really show it very well. So I'm going to go on the over to the other side of the map here. Um, in small worlds, a lot more often you find an ocean like this, where it's really long and flat. And in this area, I found uh, five water chests. And that's actually where I found uh, the water walking boots originally for the first time. All right. so. Just to show off an example of how this is done real quick. And uh, it helps to have a band of regeneration because you know you will get hit by stuff occasionally, um, but for the most part, you're pretty safe doing this. Oh, so see, there's a shark. There's two sharks. But see, I can just jump up out of the water. And once I jump up out of the water, the sharks kind of are get confused and they don't know where to follow me exactly and you can jump away from the sharks and slowly destroy them with lasers oh wow I had to kill uh, I had to kill probably like 40 or 50 sharks before I found the first diving helmet too I guess now that I've already found one the game's like oh you don't need this anymore so here we'll just give you another one but yeah you get the diving helmets just like that from fighting the sharks and Eventually, if I were to stick around here for long enough and kill enough of these pink jellyfishes, you would see a jellyfish necklace drop to be able to give you the jellyfish diving gear. So we'll get one more shark here, and the, the best thing you can do is really line them up from the top like this, and that makes it super, super easy to get them super fast. And, like yeah, like I said, you've got infinite ammo with the space gun. The space gun kills the jellyfishes and the sharks both really fast if you get them lined up just right. Uh, you do want to keep an eye out for like the crabs and the squids at the bottom because there's a limit to how many enemies can spawn on the screen at one time. So uh, these crabs are not jellyfish or sharks. They are not going to give you what you want from fighting down here. And in fact, well, I don't have a... F do I have a flipper on me? Yeah, I have a flipper on me. So I'll, I'll replace this jellyfish diving gear with the flipper to show you how I was doing it before. So you just jump up to the top. And I don't have nearly as long to breathe underwater, but you can sink all the way down to the bottom to pick up the coins and the drops. And you still have a good few seconds here at the bottom. And you're firing your lasers off in all directions so you get to see where the enemies are from far away. And then before you start to lose health from the breath loss, just jump up out of the water. You can safely survive down here for pretty much ever. Uh, you'll get black ink from the squids if you want black dye for stuff. And you'll get purple mucus from uh, mollusks on the bottom if you want purple dye. The jellyfish will give you the jellyfish necklace. And the sharks, like you saw just a second ago, will give you the diving helmet. And it's a really easy way, as long as you can find at least a flipper, as long as you can, you know, just take your space gun before you have your flipper and run down to the bottom like this and look and, and see and hope that you find a water chest. And if you don't find a water chest or a crab or a shark gets in your way and you have to retreat, that's okay. But you can see all the way to the end there just to see if there is a chest. And then right before you run out of breath, 
teleport back home. Alright, good luck. Hope you find everything you need, and good night. For real.